Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. So I decided today to look into a little bit more for those of you guys that have done spell work, witchcraft, or a spell or a manifestation, something that you've been working really hard towards. I had a couple of people on Instagram hit me up and be like, hey, you should do a reading um, regarding why our manifestations are not happening or why I am not getting results for my spell work, etc. So I decided to do this video for you guys. First and foremost, I want to tell you and wish every single one of you guys a happy new year. We are 2023. I'm hoping that you guys are setting your intentions and going into this new year uh, focused, determined, and knowing exactly what it is that you want to manifest. Though sometimes we may not always have control over situations. You do have control over how you react to them. Try the best you can not to focus on what is happening, but more so on the energy or the ultimate outcome that you're looking for. So without further ado, we're going to go from Aries all the way to Pisces to see exactly what's going on and what's the reason why your manifestation or your spell work is not coming through. For those of you guys that don't do manifestations, law of attraction or spell work, this video is not for you. Uh, as you guys know, I'm always trying to come up with new ideas to want to connect with you guys, but also give you guidance and a more clear perspective on what's going on, what are the blockages that you need to work on, what you need to release, etc. So that is exactly what we're doing. So like I said, let's get into it. This is going to be for all the zodiacs. We're going to start with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, <clears throat> we call upon you. We ask you to please step forward, guide us, allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for each one of the zodiac signs regarding their spell work, regarding their manifestations. Give us a clear insight to what it is that is blocking them or what it is that they need to release to be able to experience that manifestation here in the earthly plane. We call upon spirits of divination. Give us insight. Give me insight. Allow me to open up as a vessel to communicate to those that are watching my video, to give them insight, clarity, and understanding regarding their manifestations or their lack of movement or progress in those manifestations. Here we go. We're going to begin here with Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Why is it that they are not experiencing the results? What is the blockages that they need to overcome? What is it that they need to work on at this point in time? regarding their manifestation, regarding their outcome for the spell work that has been done. All right, here we go. Aries. All right, so we have the hermit here. The lovers. Temperance. Two of pentacles, seven of pentacles, and the knight of swords. All right, so Aries... <clears throat> <clears throat> when we're talking about your manifestations or the lack of movement and progress, it has a lot to do with understanding that it is important to detach yourself from the situation, though I know it is difficult to understand or to even learn how to master that. You need to understand that the way you go into the spell work or when you go into the manifestation, when you're so connected emotionally to what it is that you're trying to manifest, that is what becomes a blockage to you. So it's almost like they're telling you, you need to learn to detach yourself from the situation. It's almost like, think of it this way, when you go, for those that are religious, right? And you go to a church and you go to pray for a miracle or you go to pray to God for something that you are needing at this point in time in your life, you light them the candle, you pray to him. And then you go about home, you go about your business, knowing that the faith, the faith that you have within you is what's going to create that outcome. So what they're telling you at this point in time, it is important for you to detach yourself from what the current situation is right now, meaning what's happening right now. Stop focusing on that and start focusing on the outcome, what it is that you want to happen. Um, it becomes a blockage for you. So you need to learn to detach yourself from that emotion. Um, so as an example, for those of you guys that are currently in a separation, for example, and you did some type of love working or some type of love manifestation or subliminal uh, messages to try to manifest the reunification or the connection or the rekindling, don't focus on what's happening right now or what's not going right. 
what you need to be focusing on is exactly what you want the outcome to become. Though right now it's difficult, you need to understand and tell yourself, um, though I may not be in control of what's happening, <laughs> of what's happening right now, I have full control of the outcome and what it is that I want. And they're telling you to have faith here, Aries. There is a bit of lack of faith. Whenever you feel anxious or whenever you feel like things are not moving as quickly as you would want, you start to doubt yourself as well as doubting the power that you possess when we're talking about manifestation. So again, it is about keeping that in, in perspective and understanding that in order for you to be able to see the full result or the quicker results that you're looking for, you need to learn to detach yourself from the situation, meaning how you feel right now. Stop focusing on the missing. Stop focusing on the lack of them not being present. Or for those of you guys that are trying to manifest finances and career, stop focusing on the fact that <clears throat> on the fact that you don't have right now. Uh, try the best you can to focus on the outcome. What it is that uh, you're trying to manifest, how are you going to feel when you get that good news or when you see that manifestation? What is the first thing that you're going to do? Tune into that energy and that is the energy that you need to maintain in order to see movement and progress. Okay, so we're going to pull out an oracle card here and see what spirit has for you guys. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is the final message for them? What is the final message for them? in regards to their manifestation, in regards to their outcome. All right, here we go. And the card that you have is thriving. So again, it is about, <laughs> excuse me, it is about focusing yourself on the outcome and staying in that energy only through releasing, meaning whenever we try to hold on to things, right? Whenever you... As an example, your relationship's not working and you feel them drifting apart. There is within you the desire to chase them, the desire to smother them because you're fearing that they're going to release or they're going to let go or they're going to walk away. When you do that, what you're actually doing is you're sending out an energy of obsession. You're sending an energy of doubt. You're sending an energy of desperation. And though they may not be aware of what's happening on a subconscious level, they're able to pick up on that energy. So you're repul uh, repulsing them in essence. Um, so bring it back to yourself, Aries, bring it back to you and how you're going to feel when you see that outcome. Stay in that energy of expectancy, but release yourself from the attachment of what's happening right now. Only then will you be able to thrive, will you be able to see the beautiful results. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus here. <clears throat> what is the blockages? What is it that's holding Taurus back from being able to manifest or being able to see the results of their manifestations, what they're trying to attract or in regards to the spell work? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. You have the Ten of Swords, Seven of Pentacles. You keep thinking of the loss or you keep thinking of the lack of what you're trying to draw in. <clears throat> you need to value yourself more, Taurus. You need to understand that you are deserving. So basically, in essence, what's blocking you right now or what's blocking your manifestation or your outcome is the feeling that you don't deserve it. So... As an example, whenever we're teaching um, our classes of manifestation, a lot of the things or one of the major things that comes up is the feeling of worthiness. And whether you're aware of it on a conscious or subconscious level or whether you're not aware of it, um, you can ask for things. But if deep down in your heart, you feel like you don't deserve it, there is always going to be that this is where you're at. This is the desire, what you're trying to manifest, what you're trying to bring towards you. And then there's this gap, right? From point A to point B to be able to experience what you're wanting and the wanting to desire, right? In order for you to get to that point, you need to feel that you deserve what you're asking for. 
Now, whether this was in childhood, whether this stems from childhood, how you were raised, how your environment was, whatever it is, a lot of the things that hold us back has a lot to do with our self-limiting beliefs, right? What we're taught, what we're raised growing up thinking, whatever that is, or whatever it is that they taught you. There is a disparity here from point A to point B, a feeling of, though I want this and I want this to happen, and this is the outcome that I want, there is a gap. And in that, in this gap right here, right, to get you from point A to point B, you need to feel that you deserve it. Because a lot of the manifestations, whether it's spell work, whether it's um, doing spells, whether it's the law of attraction, whether it's manifestations, whatever it is that you're trying to draw into your life. If you don't feel worthy on a deeper level, as an example, if you were raised uh, thinking that success is something almost impossible to achieve, right? Because everyone around you has always struggled. Everyone around, like all you've seen is struggle. You may get to a point of consciousness of understanding that you desire that success, which immediately puts you in a situation of a powerful situation, because if you don't desire it, or if you don't acknowledge what you desire, then it's not meant for you. So the fact that you're acknowledging you, I want to succeed, it means it's for you, right? But how we've been taught or how we've been raised or the people that have been around us that has that we've seen nothing but struggle, though you may want to manifest that towards your reality, right? Um, in a different timeline, being able to draw that towards you. If you don't feel like you are worthy or like you're able to because everyone around you has never succeeded, if you cannot get yourself to feel in alignment with what you're wanting to make happen, it's almost impossible. You can spend five years trying to manifest something, but if deep down you don't feel like you deserve it, you're never going to manifest it. And the key to manifestation as well as with spell work is knowing that it is done. Once you do spell work, you put the energy, you put the effort in doing the spell work. You have That's when we rely on faith, right? The feeling of, I understand that it is done. I am ready to receive and you put it out to the universe and it happens. Now, if you feel something within you feels like there is doubt or like I'm not worthy or it will never happen, you're becoming a blockage to that desire. So you're sending different signals. So what spirit is telling you is I heard your petition or I heard what you're trying to manifest and it's there. It's already there in your existence. You have the king of pentacles and the ace of wands. The material action, right, of the passion or desire that you're trying to manifest is already there. But with the Ten of Swords, there is a feeling. There is a feeling, Seven of Pentacles, because of the past, because of what I've experienced, because of what I've seen, it's almost impossible for me to believe that I'm able to attain it. So what they're telling you is you need to change your way of thinking. You got to dig deep, deep in you to figure out what part of you feels unworthy of what you're trying to manifest. Understand that though you experience that or the people around you experience a certain type of thing, you are the one that is in control of your destiny. And you have every right to put it out to the universe what it is that you want. Ask and it shall be given. So put yourself in the energy of expectancy, but also work on your limiting beliefs, Taurus. So we're going to look at the Oracle cards. Spirit, what is the final message here for Taurus on Moon Rising Venus regarding their manifestation? Oh, okay. Thank you. And you have relaxation. So this card is a representation of letting go. There is something for those of you guys, those of you guys that are my clients that have worked with me in the past when we're talking about spell work. The first thing I tell my clients is before we even get to the point of doing the rituals itself, it is important to prepare yourself mentally. And I tell my clients, listen to meditation, practice meditation, or even guided meditation if it's really hard for you to concentrate. Because the guided meditation is going to guide you, right? To prepare you mentally to release, to let go, to completely let go of control and let it happen. So relaxation to me is a representation of meditation. You need a lot of meditation that is going to teach you to let go of control so that you can finally see the results of what you're trying to manifest. All right, my lovelies.
All right, now let's go to <laughs> Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini's here. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is their blockage? What is it that they need to work on to be able to fully see the manifestation or results? Oh, okay, I'm gonna take it. So we have here the Knight of Wands, Three of Pentacles. The devil. Oh, we got two cards here. Two of wands, six of swords. And the knight of swords again. Oh, we have two cards here. All right, I'm going to take them. <laughs> Seven of pentacles and nine. Okay. All right, Gemini, for some of you guys, you've been working on some type of manifestation, some type of spell that you've been trying to manifest for quite a while. And it almost feels like sometimes you're almost to the point of being able to fully manifest, but there's a blockage or there's a feeling of not fully being able to attain it, not fully being able to see the full manifestation. I'm going to tell you off the bat, Gemini, stop listening to people. Whenever you're trying to manifest something, whenever you're trying to do spell work and see some type of result, you have a tendency of not being able to hold back or hold your tongue. There, There is this excitement around it right and you speak to people but the people that you speak to or though you may be speaking to someone and there's someone else around they are not always happy or even they might think like you're crazy or there's a lot of like judgmental type of energy around you and I also see toxic type of energy meaning like if you tell someone oh I'm starting this business da 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 next time they see you it's like oh how's your small business or how's your little business going like almost in a way of like trying to make you feel less you need to stop telling people what you're trying to do or what you're trying to manifest and learn to keep it to yourself because I feel like you experience blockages because the people that are around you are definitely not encouraging or they're very doubtful or they put their judgment and what they feel they're capable of doing they put that on you so if you're talking to someone about starting a business let's say a relative or someone that maybe in the past they tried to do that it didn't work out they're very quick to tell you it's not going to work out I try to trust me you're just wasting your time instead of encouraging you um it's like they put more negative energy around you and that's what creates the blockages so what they're telling you here is moving forward what you need to do is Become more private about what you're trying to manifest, what you're trying to do. Stop telling people your next move. Stop telling people um, what you're working on. Like be more about showing it when it's already being done or you've already attained it versus telling people when you're in the stages of working towards manifesting that. I hope it makes sense um, because there is a habit that you have a tendency of doing of communicating or expressing maybe you're so excited you can't help it and you just want to feel that good vibe you know so you tell people or you're bouncing with other people ideas and stuff um but what that creates is envy and jealousy around you so they start to put that energy towards you and it creates blockages that are unnecessary and this has a lot to do with the people around you or the people that you're sharing your information to so again keep it private, learn to keep it private, learn to keep your moves in private, like show them with actions when that shit's happening. Like don't announce to people what your next steps are going to be, okay? All right, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, what is their final message here with the Oracle cards? It's very good. What is their final messages here? Okay, here we go. And your card is all tied up. Again, it's the energy that I'm feeling of like the moment that you start to want to bounce ideas off of other people or want to share, you know, exciting news. It's like they're very quick to hate. They're very quick to judge or, or tell you like it's impossible or that's not going to happen. Or you know what? I knew someone that did it 
And yeah, you feel like it's going good, but then, you know, they lost it all. Whatever the situation is, it's like they throw this type of energy and that's what creates the blockages. I think your worst enemy, Gemini, is your mouth. So keep it private so that they don't interfere, so that they don't, you know, it's kind of like as an example, when I'm working with clients, those of you guys that, you know, been following my channel for a while, for some of you guys that are my clients, have been my clients for a long time. You know how we do when we are talking about spell work. When I do spell work for you guys, the first thing I tell every single client, do not go and share your moves or what you're trying to do to other people. I don't care how close they are to you. Until you see the manifestation, if you want to share it after because you're excited or sometimes people come to you and they're like, hey, I'm going through this shit. And you're like, I've been through it, too. And I know someone that can hook you up, meaning me. <laughs> then it's a good thing to share that, right? Uh, especially with people that you trust. But one of the things I always tell my clients is never show people your, never share to people what you have in your, in your armor, what you have, like never show people your deadly weapon, basically, unless it's time to pull it out. You get what I'm saying? So there you go. I was trying to say something else, but it just didn't, it didn't come right. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to cancer. Let's see what's going on with cancers. What is it that they need to know? What is their blockage? What is it that they need to do to be able to overcome that and be able to see their full manifestations of their spell work? Or manifestations answer feminine raising Venus all right here we go you guys I keep pulling the seven of Pentacles and the knight of swords all right. So what they're telling you here, Cancer, I'm going to be very straightforward. What they're telling you here is you need to stop procrastinating. Um, it's almost like you work on manifesting something or as an example, if you're doing spell work, you're not consistent with something. There is something here that there's lacking consistency. It's almost like the moment that you start to do something and you're not seeing results as quickly as you would want, you become demoralized and then you stop or... Um, you look for other ways to manifest things. It's like you're trying one thing and another and not really focusing. So what they're telling you, I'm going to be honest, what they're telling you here is you need to stick to your guns. You need to be consistent. Um, you don't give enough time to see the results. So it's almost kind of like, <clears throat> as an example, people that come to me and they're like, you know, I can't find a stable job. I keep going from one job to another da 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 because it just doesn't work out whatever and then I look into their situation and it's like well you only last a month or two months in a job and then you go to another one and you keep doing that how are you going to get to the point of being able to see the full manifestation meaning how are you able to see the results or the fruits that bear results based off of your hard work if you're not really putting the hard work Do you get what I'm saying so what they're telling you here is you need to be consistent. Um, as an example, if you're manifesting something and you know that it's going to take you 21 days to mentally, on a subconscious level, engrave that in your mind so that you can make it a habit of seeing or feeling or believing a certain type of way, and you only do it for nine days and you see no results and then you get you know all bummed out about it, you don't stick with it no more. So basically what they're telling you is stop procrastinating um, stop wondering why it's rendering results or other people are getting results or they're making other things happen and you're not. The reason is because you're not consistent. You're not giving enough time. Once you plant the seed, you're not <coughs> giving, giving it enough time to be able to see the results from that. Um, so stick to your guns, cancer. When you start something, finish it. All right, spirits, what is the final message here? For Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, final message for them. 
regarding their manifestation. Okay, here we go. And we have focus. Exactly what I'm saying. It's almost like <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of air here and earth, the, the, the desire, the want to see the materialization of it, but the moment it doesn't go the way you want it to go, you get in your feelings about it and then you, you're not consistent. So what they're telling you is you need to be focused. If you're going to start something, finish it. Finish it so that you can see the, re you can't say something didn't work with you for you if you didn't stick with it and you didn't go all the way. You can't go halfway and then complain that it's not manifesting quick enough or that it's not happening if you didn't really complete what you were supposed to. All right. Okay. Now let's go to Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Why is it that they're not seeing any results? What are their blockages? What do they need to overcome? They're able to see the full results of this. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. All right. So what they're showing me here, Leo, for a lot of you guys, it has a lot to do with the environment or the people around you. Um, I see you extremely focused when starting to or when wanting to work towards some type of manifestation or for those of you guys that are doing spell work. I see you, <laughs> excuse me, I see you guys extremely focused, but then there's a lot of distractions around you. So it could be that you have a tendency of being extremely social or being around a lot of people or bouncing off ideas to other people. And you pick up on other people's ideas. I'm not saying that you steal their ideas. You pick up on their ideas, they inspire you. And then you're on to the next big idea or the best, the best, the next best thing uh, that you're trying to manifest. So what they're telling you is be more practical and break it down. So you may want to manifest or you may be doing spell work about for love, for money, for health, for whatever. What they're telling you is you need to break it down. What is it that you need right now, Leo? What is it that you're trying to manifest right now? What is the number one thing that in your soul you feel like you want to manifest that? Whatever that is, that's what you need to focus on and stop being distracted or stop being very general. I need you to be more specific. I need you to be more focused, laser focused on one thing out of the tens and thousands of things that you want to work on or that you want to manifest. Like I said, for those of you guys doing spell work, if you're doing money spell, love spell, um, health spell, business spells, et cetera, you're not giving it enough time to be able to see the results of something. And it has a lot to do because of the fact that you're very distracted and you have a lot of either options, opinions, or people around you that change. Uh, like an example, you could have one thing that you feel like you want to desire and manifest right now. And then next week it changes. So what they're telling you is be less general, be more specific, bring it down to a few things, not tens and thousands of things. And I'm not saying that you cannot manifest tens and thousands of things. Of course you can, but focus primarily on manifesting one thing so that you can blow your mind and realize the power that you have and then go on to the next and then the next and then the next. You get what I'm saying? Keep it more focused, more exactly on what it is that you want in the moment right now versus I want this right now, but I also want this or I want to attain this two years from now. So I might as well manifest it now. Don't get distracted. <laughs> Don't get distracted is basically what they're saying. Be more specific when you're working on manifestations. All right, here we go. And we have release. So release could be the representation of once you have the idea, not the idea, sorry. <clears throat> Once you have crystallized picture, vision, idea, or desire that you're trying to manifest. Once you have that crystallized exactly what it is that you want right now, what you're trying to manifest, put energy towards that. 
and release it, put it out into the, <laughs> the universe, either through visualization exercises, through uh, the 369 rule, um, spell work, whatever it is. And once it's done, and once you put in that effort, release it out into the universe, and you'll be able to attain that very quickly. Um, even blowing your mind how quickly you actually have it. You have the Wheel of Fortune and the Fool card. So there's a lot of energy there, a lot of pent-up energy. Don't be so distracted. Don't want to manifest 10,000 things when, as an example, manifest uh, success and love um, when you know that you should be focusing on manifesting stability or finances because your rent's due next month. Do you see what I'm saying? Focus on what it is that you need now. All right, now let's go to Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know? What is their blockage that's holding them back from the manifestation or the results of spell work? Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Virgo, oh. Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How is you guys' New Year's, by the way? A lot of changes are happening, you guys. Craziness is coming, too. So be ready. All right, here we go. Virgo. We have the Three of Wands, the King of Wands, the Hierophant. The Wheel of the Year, <laughs> Ten of Wands, and the Full Card. Mm, similar cards to Leo. Virgo, I want to say that for the next coming for the next coming few months, you're going to be very powerful when we're talking about manifestations, when we're talking about um, results from spell work, when we're talking about really being able to manifest, there is major potential here. And what they're telling you is be consistent, um, be consistent. And I would tell you, because this consistent from now all the way to June, in regards to manifesting or the things that you're trying to draw into your life, because I see you extremely powerful, powerful manifesting uh, energy here. Um, but what you do need to work on is rele releasing your self-limiting beliefs. You have the Hierophant here with the Ten of Wands. It's almost like you connect your story or you connect what you've experienced with other people. And in that connection, Whatever it is that they're going through, whatever it is that their results are, whatever it is that the, where they're at at this point in life, <clears throat> connecting with people sometimes uh, could be not necessarily a good thing because you feel like when it re it's so relatable, it's like you feel like this is what's going to happen for me down the line. Um, and those are self-limiting beliefs. So what they're telling you here is knowing and understanding first. You have very strong, powerful manifesting energy right now. Put your intentions, your effort, your spell work, start doing it now because you will definitely see results from that. And another thing, let go of self-limiting beliefs. I'm going to tell you this because it's coming on very strongly for you guys. Stop thinking small. That's it. Stop thinking small. From now, like I said, all the way to June, think big, okay? Think big because you have the power to manifest however big your idea, your desire, your want is. You're able to manifest that with ease, but you need to let go of like wanting to work on I want to manifest a really good paying job with people that I love working with and a very amazing environment, but I know that I can't get everything. So I will be okay with uh, a good paying job. Don't settle. 
what they're telling you is think big right now because you're you have the possibility and capability of manifesting everything you want but you need to know that you deserve it you need to believe it in your heart that it's you're worthy of it you've earned it and stop relating so much to people in the aspect of you know everything i've been through my aunt has gone through and it almost feels like like we can connect we have so many things in common but she's never gotten married maybe that's my story like no stop accepting what other people's results or what their choices have led them to where they're at right now that's not your story you are the one in control of your own life virgo think big is what they're telling me all right what is their final message here for virgo sun when raising venus regarding their manifestations and we have felt two. Yep. We have patience and inner peace. Patience is it's almost an energy of yes, being patient, but also healing type of energy. Healing <clears throat> the feeling that you were never seen, the feeling that things can never go too good for you because you've never experienced that. You don't know what it feels. Maybe you're not meant for that. Like, think big, Virgo, is what they're telling you. Be patient, yes, but also find the inner peace because the inner peace has a lot to do with how we feel about ourselves. And I, I not necessarily peace to me, inner peace would indicate a person that is healed from their past traumas that you're happy with yourself, that you're able to accept yourself wholly and completely. And that you know, and without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt that you are worthy of what you're asking for. Because if you weren't worthy of what you're asking for, your mind, your consciousness wouldn't even be aware that that's what you want. See what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> now we're going with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the obstacle? What is it that they need to overcome? What is it that they need to work on to be able to see their full manifestations? Their full results. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ten of Cups, the world, Five of Swords, <laughs> Page of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Nine of Swords. Okay. Start thinking the best is yet to come. The best is yet to happen to me. You have a tendency that when things start to go good for <laughs> excuse me, when things start to go good for you, Libra, you start to question everything. You start to wonder when the next shoe is going to drop. You start to wonder, <clears throat> things are too good. Um, it's only a matter of time before so-and-so happens. You become your worst enemy, Libra, because you overthink things. And when things are going good, instead of being in the moment and appreciating and experiencing and being present, you start to skip <laughs> 10 steps ahead, thinking of what's going to happen or what could happen in the next six months. What Spirit is telling you is you need to learn to be present. You need to learn to embrace happiness or abundance or success or love. And stop thinking that the worst is going to happen to you. Change that mindset to the best is yet to come. The best is yet to happen. Things start to go good in your life. <clears throat> start to learn to be more grateful, more thankful for the things that you have, that you're experiencing. Like I said, be present. It's about being present. Now, another thing that they're saying here is 
like I said, you're your worst enemy because what they're telling, what they're showing me, it's almost like you're like, you're about to experience, you're about to see results, you're about to, and then you're like, but what if it doesn't happen? What if this, what if that, like you start thinking a whole bunch of negative shit and that's what creates the resistance towards what was already coming towards you. So change your mindset, Libra. You're your worst enemy, babe. Work on that. It's time that you start to think positively, optimistically. Oh, I'm, you know, I've always had bad luck. I've always had a bad streak, da, 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 da. You actually empower that bad luck by accepting that that is your luck. And you can change it. And you can change it by being more optimistic, being more positive. You go outside, you see, as an example, a chuparrosa, a hummingbird, um, and you don't really acknowledge that because you're not really present because you're worried and thinking of other things. When, to me, when I see a chuparrosa, which is a hummingbird, it indicates that something new is coming towards me. And it usually indicates love and romance. Either it's going to pick up, it's going to get better, or a new person is coming in. So again, learn to see the magic within you because you kind of miss the point. And in missing that point, you start to overthink, overanalyze, and then you start to think of like a thousand reasons why things could go bad. I get it. We all been through difficulty. <clears throat> We've all experienced difficult situations, but it doesn't mean that that is what it's always going to be. It has a lot to do with the way you react to the experiences in your life. Okay. All right. <laughs> And we have blossoming abundance. So again, like I said, <laughs> be more present. Learn to be more grateful, more gracious. Count your blessings. And you'll start to notice that your life starts to take this shift where you're able to manifest, where you're able to draw in more of the things that you want instead of the things you don't want. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. This cough is so freaking annoying. <laughs> All right, we're going to go with Scorpio now. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know? What is their blockage? What is keeping them from being able to see the full manifestation and results of their spell work? <laughs> Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. <clears throat> We have judgment, <laughs> nine of wands, two of swords, <laughs> eight of cups, six of pentacles, and the empress. You judge yourself very harshly, Scorpio. Whenever you're trying to manifest something or whenever you're doing spell work, instead of being focused, like going into it focused and grounded, you're all wired up. You're all up in your emotions when you're trying to manifest, when you're trying to. And instead of focusing on what you're trying to draw in, you're focusing more on the feeling of how you feel when you're doing it. So that's what becomes a blockage to you. That's what becomes a blockage to your manifestation or that's what becomes a blockage to your spell work. You're too in your emotions. So what they're telling you is whenever you're trying to do some type of spell work, ground yourself. Ground yourself for a good 10, 15 minutes. Visualize and focus exactly what it is. Why am I doing this? What is the result that I'm looking for? How am I going to feel when I get that result? And then you begin the spell work. Or when, if you're trying to manifest something, focus exactly on what it is that you want to do, what you're trying to draw towards you and focus on the emotion of it. <laughs> Not on the emotion of what you're feeling right now, but how you're going to feel when it happens. Because your emotions is what gets, <clears throat> excuse me, your emotions is what, what gets in between your manifestation. So for a lot of you guys, as an example, you get so up in your emotions, you don't see results and then you get frustrated and then you start to overthink and then you're like, fuck this shit, it's not happening, it's not working. And then you walk away. And the universe was about to, give you the results there. It was about to be given to you in a silver platter. 
but your emotions gets the best of you and it and that's what becomes a blockage so stop doing that i'm gonna get a gum you guys because my mouth is dry and it's creating more of the coughing okay Let's see what your final message is here, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is the final message here? For Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus regarding their manifestations. Yeah, what they're telling me is, as an example, if you're doing a love spell to draw in new love, do you feel frustrated? You feel stuck. You feel like things have not progressed. Like nothing is exciting going on in your love life, for example. And you want to do this love spell to draw in love to you. You go into it feeling frustrated. You go into it feeling lonely. You go into it feeling... You go into the spell work. Feeling how you're feeling right now instead of feeling how you're going to feel when that manifestation happens. So the frustration, the loneliness, the sadness, you're putting it in your spell work. And that's why you're not getting results. Learn to have fun with it. Almost giving it, you have the pleasure card. That indicates to me, it's almost like a childlike energy. Um, something that, that I tell my clients sometimes, like especially you know people that are trying to draw in love. I tell them it's important to learn to have fun when we're talking about dating, because that's the one time that you're single. You don't owe your loyalty to no one. You get to pick and choose whoever you want to go out with, whoever you want to see. If you want to go out with 50 people, you can go out with 50 people because none of them have the right to tell you why you're going out with other people. If they want that, right, if they want you not to that's when they step up and be like, hey, let's make it official. So have fun with it. Don't go into dating or to dates with the expectancy of, oh, I'm looking for my future husband. Oh, I'm looking for my future wife. Um, because the expectations are really high. And it's a person that is not going to show you who they are in that first date. Do you get what I'm saying? And a lot of people are going into dating or that date tainted. They've gone through shit like you have. So they're more protective of their energy. They're not going to show you on full display exactly who they are and what they're bringing to the table on that first date. Learn to have fun with it. Don't take things so seriously. Don't take things so personal. If it's not happening to you, as quickly as an example, a friend of yours is manifesting as well, and you see that they're getting results and you're not, and then you get mad and you're getting your feelings and your emotions, don't get mad at them. Don't take it personal. That what that's telling you is that you need to work on your emotions and being more grounded to be able to detach yourself from the situation, to know exactly what it is that you want and to put it out into the universe and be grateful and thankful that it's already done. And you'll see results. All right. Okay, my lovelies. Now let's go to Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is their blockages? What is it that they need to work on to be able to see their full results or manifestations of spell work? <coughs> Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay. Ten of Pentacles. Seven of Cups. Ace of Pentacles. Six of Cups, excuse me, the Devil, and Three of Pentacles. No surprise there. <laughs> Jupiter, right? Yeah, the Ten of Pentacles with the Seven of Cups. You have a lot of options and a lot of opportunities. Try to be more centered when we're talking about manifestations, when we're talking about trying to see results of spell work. Again, it's almost like the message that they gave Virgo. Be more detailed into what it is that you want. Be more specific. Uh, don't be so general. Uh, making it specific or making it about that one thing is what's going to render you results. It's what is really going to give you the full manifestation, the full result of what you're wanting.
to make happen at a quicker pace versus it coming in slowly or seeing a bit of movement, but then there's a lack of movement. It's like a tug and pull type of energy. And the reason for it is because you're too general or there are too many things that you're trying to manifest all at once. Bring it to like one or two things, um, minimize it so that you can have a full focus on what it is that you want and you will definitely see results. And for some of you guys that have been waiting results when we're talking about spell work, when we're talking about manifestations, that's quickly going to be coming in for you guys. Um, I'll go as uh, far as to say that uh, definitely the middle uh, of February, you should be seeing some type of manifestations and results, you guys. So really put in that effort, that energy for those of you guys that are just generally watching this and you haven't done manifestations or spell work, uh, now is the time to do so. All right, what is the final message here for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. And we have wonders. And wonders, to me, it's, it's all about the possibilities are endless for you guys right now. Like I said, off the cards, what I'm seeing right now... <laughs> manifestations are coming in for you guys but wonders to me indicates like you know jupiter is your ruling planet and jupiter is all about expansion it's about think you know go big or go home type of energy it doesn't matter how difficult you feel that the manifestation or the spell work that you're doing in regards to what you're trying to draw in towards you may be difficult it doesn't matter it's given it's yours it's there already what they're telling you is be more specific be more direct on what it is that you want so that you can see the results of that and move on to the next one. Doesn't mean you can't manifest, you know, 10,000 th 10, things. Like I said, the sky's the limit. Um, but what they're telling you is be more direct, be more concise, be more practical in what it is that you're wanting to manifest. Do manifestations one at a time you're going to definitely, it's going to blow your mind how quickly you're able to manifest and then you'll be able to go on to the next thing. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go with Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know? What is their blockages? What is it that's keeping them from being able to see their full manifestations or results of spell work? Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. There we go. We have the moon, <coughs> the star, three of swords, and of wands, the fool, five of pentacles. <coughs> Capricorn. What they're showing me here is your past experiences is what's keeping you from being able to progress or being able to manifest or being able to see results from your spell work. As an example, if you've done spell work for career and finances, and in the past it hasn't gone as well as you hoped it did, though you may try to do it again, you do it with a very pessimistic type of attitude because of what you've experienced in the past, and that's the blockage. So there is a negative cognitation or connection to what you're trying to manifest. There's a negative feeling there, and that's what's getting in the way of the manifestation. If you're trying to draw in love, as an example, and all you've manifest or all you've experienced is very negative relationships, you need to be more clear and concise in manifesting a healthy relationship to be able to get that healthy or that best outcome possible if you're trying to manifest success or abundance or money in your life and though you've never experienced that or you have experienced it but you've only experienced it through very hard work and difficulty that's what you're coming into that manifestation so because you feel like you have to work really hard and it's really difficult to manifest you're still capable of manifesting but it comes through difficulty to through strife um 
through burdens. So what you need to do is change your perspective, change your way of thinking and viewing situations. How do you do this? By creating a habit in your mind. So when we're talking about, as an example, if you're trying to teach yourself um, to draw in love, there is something within you that you need to work on yourself and be consistent about it until it becomes a habit. When we're talking about love, we're also connecting it to self-love. So what you could do as an example is every time you are brushing your teeth hold or stand by the mirror, tell yourself or learn to tell yourself beautiful things that you love about yourself to yourself in front of the mirror and do it for a good 15 days so that it can become a habit. Um, and only through that, once that habit or once it becomes a habit, your negative thought or your negative way of thinking is not going to kick in whenever you're trying to draw in love. And instead of drawing in love, you're repelling them. Um, it's the same thing with money. If you're trying to, you know, create or attract more money, more business, whatever it is, stop thinking that it comes through difficulty. Just because you've experienced that in the past, it doesn't mean that that's what it has to be now in the present. But you do have to work on creating some type of habit in your way of thinking to be able to draw it in faster. And without resistance. All right. Spirits, what is the final message here for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? And it comes all down to feeling worthy, Capricorn. Feeling worthy. What they're telling me is for a lot of you guys, you feel unseen. Or you feel like people just don't connect with you or they don't understand you. Um, and that's about self-love and how you feel about yourself knowing that you deserve the things that you're asking for, the things that you're doing spell work for. You're doing it because you know in your heart that you deserve it and you're worthy of it. You just need to teach your subconscious mind to understand that. A lot of us, you know, grow up in many different situations, different environments. And sometimes the environments are very difficult for Capricorns in early childhood. And it feels almost like everything is because you're ruled by Saturn, it feels like everything that you do in your life comes through difficulty. Yes, you may achieve success, but it comes through difficulty. Uh, yes, you may find that relationship that you've always looked for, or always hoped you would find, but it comes at an older age because Saturn is, you know, the planet of time and it takes time to mature and it takes time to know exactly what it is that you want. And it takes time for you to grow out of the immaturity of the physicality and connecting more with how you want to be treated in relationships or even in friendships. All right. And your final message here is solitude. So solitude to me could indicate for some of you guys, for some of you guys, it could be the feeling of being scared of being alone. For others of you, it's the feeling of always being alone. That is what, when we're talking about self-love, it's what becomes very difficult for you guys to allow people to get close to you. <clears throat> for some of you guys, you may allow people to get close to you, but only to a certain, to a certain limit. You don't let them get too close because you're so used to protecting yourself and in the protecting of yourself, it's really difficult for people to put in effort or want to put in effort to get closer to you. And it has everything to do with, again, what I said. For some of you guys choosing being, to be in solitude because you've experienced nothing but messy or difficult relationships. But in keeping yourself in this situation, right? Keeping yourself in this solitude still leaves you feeling empty and lonely. So get out of this type of energy and know and understand that you deserve whatever it is that you're trying to draw in Capricorn. All right. Now we're going to go with Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that they need to know, Spirit? What are the blockages? What is it that they need to overcome in order to be able to see their full manifestations or results of their spell work? All right. We have Eight of Pentacles, 
High Priestess, Ace of Swords, Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, and the Four of Swords. I'm going to keep it 100% and very simple, Aquarius. <coughs> Visualization and meditation. The mind. That's how you're able to manifest. That, that's how you're able to really experience results. For some of you guys are telling me there is a manifestation that's coming through already. So for some of you guys, you may actually see results or you may start to experience the manifestation of it from now all the way to the middle of February. Uh, it's coming in very quick. And for those of you guys that are having trouble manifesting uh, or if you're doing spell work, very difficult to see results. Um, it has a lot to do with the training of your mind to be able to be prepared to receive it. The easiest way to do it is, again, visualization exercises and meditation. Meditation or even guided meditation um, guides you through the process of being able to feel and to experience as if you're experiencing right now what it is that you're wanting to bring towards you. And it guides you through that, through those emotions. till you get to a point, as an example, if it's a guided meditation, 30 minutes, it could take you 10 to 15 minutes to get in the emotional state of experiencing that. And then the other 15 minutes, they're guiding you through visualization exercises, which think of it as like putting your energy on overdrive, right? Because you're vibrating of, of the excitement and you're already there emotionally, mentally, on what you're trying to draw in and then another 15 minutes of them guiding you um towards the result that you're wanting think of it as like i said your energy being on overdrive and you're pulling that and being able to manifest it very quickly so again meditation and visualization exercises is what's going to give you the ultimate results at a very quick pace that's it for some of you guys you're not already experiencing those results all right, what is the final message here for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Thank you, Spirit. And we have truth. Truth is, <laughs> truth is exactly, it, the, the, the thing about it is, when we're talking about manifesting, when we're talking about spell work, things that we're trying to draw into our lives, right? Things that we're trying to magnetize and bring and pull towards us has everything to do with the mind. Because if your mind can see it and you can feel it, it is already yours. So truth to me would indicate, though you may feel a distinction between, oh, this is just like, it's imagination, I'm creating it, doesn't mean I've experienced it. If you can connect that thought or what you're trying to manifest or what you're trying to bring towards you, if you can connect that with your emotions, it becomes truth, whether you've experienced it or not, whether you've never experienced what it is to be in a loving relationship. If you can visualize and get yourself to the point of such high energy that you're in alignment with what you're bringing towards you, it becomes truth. It becomes reality. And by it becoming truth and becoming reality, it will then unfold here in the man in the manifesting world, in our physical world. So again, if there is something within you that feels like, oh, meditation or guided meditation or visualization, it's imaginary, it's <clears throat> manifesting is using your imagination. And if your imagination, meaning your brain can connect with it emotionally, your brain doesn't know how to distinguish whether it's real or not. It just feels like you've already experienced that. So it will then manifest in the physical aspect. All right, my lovelies. All right. And finally, finally, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What is it that's holding them back? What is it that they need to do to be able to experience or see the results or manifestations? <clears throat> I see sun, moon, rising, Venus. 
I see someone raising Venus. All right, here we go. Self-limiting beliefs, Pisces. It is about working on, <clears throat> working on the feeling of being worthy to receive what you're asking for. <clears throat> and what comes through for some of you guys, it's almost like keeping it simple, <clears throat> keeping it simple <clears throat> because there's something within you that feels like as long as I get this, like I'm good. And the reason for it is because you deep down feel like you don't deserve what you're trying to manifest. Or if you're doing spell work, you feel like you don't deserve what you're trying to experience. And it's because you've experienced so much difficulty or you've experienced so much heartbreak. You've experienced so much difficulty that it's almost like, I just want little crumbs and I'll be good. And what spirit is telling you is, my dear, you deserve so much more than the credit you give yourself. And you have the power one of the signs that you're literally able to manifest through your emotions and your intuition. If you can connect with your manifestation, what you're asking for, what you're trying to manifest, spell work, what you're working on, what you're trying to draw towards your life. If you can connect with that emotionally, think more of, why, how is this going to make you feel? When this happens, how is it going to make you feel? What is the emotion that comes up? You have it already. It's in your hands. You've already manifested it. What's the first thing you're going to do after that manifest? Have you thought about how you feel in that moment? If you can connect emotionally to what you're trying to manifest, you're able to manifest it like that. Use your imagination, Pisces. Your imagination is such one of your biggest strengths and your intuition and your emotions. Connecting with it will give you the results very quickly. But you need to learn to connect with it. Connect with it in a way like I said, think of it this way. What is it that you're trying to manifest? You have it. How do you feel? What's the first thing that you're doing now that you have this thing that you've tried to manifest and it's here? What is it that you're doing? What's the first thing you're doing? How do you feel inside? Connecting? is your power. But you also need to understand that you deserve what you're wanting to manifest. You've earned it. It is about understanding that your emotions is your most lethal weapon, Pisces. Connecting with everything is what makes you powerful. Use it to your advantage when we're talking about spell work and when we're talking about manifestations, because if you can connect with it emotionally, it is already yours. What is the final message here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus regarding their manifestations or the results of their spell work? Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, here we go. And it's going forward. Like I said, connect with it on an emotional level. I always get clients tell me, I've never manifested this, so I don't know how it feels. Well, dig deep. Why are you trying to manifest that? As an example, they're trying to manifest more money. Why are you trying to? Because I want to be able to provide for my family. How does that make you feel? It's going to make me feel less stress. Okay, so you're going to be excited. What's the first thing you're going to do? 
you have money now. You have money saved. What's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, I would love to take my kids on vacation. How does that feel to you? How are they, how, by you looking at their faces right now, in the, that excitement of knowing that for the first time in their lives, you're taking them on vacation. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel excited. It makes me feel proud of myself. Getting yourself in that, in that energy, in that alignment, and that excitement, connecting it, your brain, it's, it's like, your brain is connecting to it like it would having an orgasm. <laughs> it connects with it and it's already there. So it doesn't distinguish between reality and what's fake, what imagination is or what is the reality of it. It doesn't connect. The only way your brain is able to connect something and make it real is connecting with it on an emotional level. Once you're able to put your brain to connect with your emotions, your brain thinks it's a memory. It thinks it already happened. Connect with your emotions, Pisces. This is a very strong and powerful tool for you. All right, my lovelies. Well, my lovelies, I love spending time with you guys. I hope that this 2023 is the best year that you've ever experienced. I hope that you guys are as excited as I am for this new year. I wish you guys all the very best. I hope you enjoyed these readings. If you did, definitely comment below. Let me know. I will continuously keep making different types of readings, not just the regular same boring readings about different subjects in life, uh, as well as spell work. We have tons of spell work coming up, editing a few uh, that will be going up. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye.